Challenge Cup finalists, visit the Yorkshire Cup finalists. It's Featherstone and St Helens at Post Office Road. And what a contrast there's been between the two teams' achievements so far this season. Neither pulled up any trees early on, each began with an away win, followed by two defeats. But for Featherstone, those defeats just kept coming. It's now nine in a row, with only that Yorkshire Cup run for comfort. St Helens, by contrast, haven't looked back since coming from behind to beat the New Zealanders. Six straight league wins. And last month's 50-11 thrashing of Featherstone especially will do the dressing room confidence no harm. And they've done it all without many new names. Without the men, Alex Murphy nearly signed from Rugby Union. David Bishop went instead to Hulkingston Rovers. Mark Ring didn't go anywhere, he's still down in Cardiff. Murphy was sure he'd get Jonathan Davis, but Doug Lawton slipped him a ticket to witness. Australia's David Campesi decided he didn't need any extra money. John Devereux took Witness's extra money instead, and Mark Jones found money from a new job and still plays union. So it's been left to stalwarts like Neil Holding to fly the flag, and Holding in particular has flown in splendidly. He's been showing off his skills for Saints for more than a decade. His inventiveness, his awareness of different routes to the line have brought him a career total of 151 tries. And only last month in front of the scrum down cameras, he guided Saints to victory at Warrington. Neil Holding kicks ahead, and if the Holding gets there first, he's got a try. Referee says yes. Actually, the thing is, competition for places now, and you've got to realise that, that everybody's got somebody pushing for the first team spot, and it's going to make you play even harder, such as myself now. His opposing scrum half, Derek Fox, first played for Featherstone six years ago, but he's still only 25. Many current players believe he should be Great Britain's first choice for the number seven jersey. Certainly few men create more tries. And the Fox boot is one of the most accurate in modern rugby league, whether kicking for goal or stretching the defence. Well, if Great Britain do have a problem at scrum half, it's still worth looking at this one. Derek, obviously it's a very worrying run at the moment, but do you have the confidence that you can come through this? We have, yes, John. It's been a very disappointing start to the season for this one. We've, uh, the league win against Castleford really jeers up for the, st for the first game of the season, but coming on since then, we haven't done really well. The average point scored against us has been 32, so I'm hoping today that we, act we can turn the corner and uh, produce a good win and show everybody in the rugby league that Featherstone are back. A check on the teams. Featherstone have Chris Bibb back from injury at fullback, replacing Tim Sharp, who drops to sub. They're still missing Smith, Smales, Booth, Hughes, and Napper. Saints move Phil Vivas to loose forward, replacing the suspended Shane Cooper. Gary Connolly comes in at fullback. Tony Kay is centre and Mark Bailey stand off because Tommy Frodsham's injured. And Paul Jones is in the pack because Paul Forbes unfit. For later, we'll see Bradford against Leeds, the second division leaders in action, and part two of our competition. But here now, John Helm and David Watkins to guide you through the action here at Post Office Row. John. So, down the hill comes St Helens. That's an interesting kick forward. <laughs> and I think, David, you've got some uh, great memories of Featherstone playing down the hill here. That's right. Uh, Saints are going downhill. I always found it intimidating a ground because the crowd is so close to everything. And down the hill first half, I always certainly like to go down the hill on the second half because you always felt you could do something against the Featherstone side. Neil Holding got the ball from the scrum and here's young fullback Gary Connolly. He played at Wembley, of course, last season as a 17-year-old. Holding going to little run around with Phil Vivas. He's moved into the loose forward position. So the early pressure from the Saints, who've been scoring a lot of tries in recent weeks. Groves along the line is holding, and they'll be looking for a gap from Haggerty, who skips inside a couple of tackles and gets the ball away for Vivas. And uh, the move keeps going, and Paul Laughlin goes on a run, and he's got his winger in. Hunt is in, first minute of the game. Alan Hunt has the try for St Helens. And again, Featherstone's tackling, leaving a lot to be desired. I know Peter Fox has been working on the tackling pattern this week, but they weren't there. Laughlin got his man in. Well, this is the sort of start St Helens wanted. They're playing down the hill the first half. It's always difficult ground to play on, moving it out. Slack defensive work on behalf. Paul Newlove caught out of position. An easy chance for him to go over in the corner. And it's uh, not an easy kick for Paul Lachlan. Right out on that touchline. He's taken the ball back a good distance. We're on the 25. Trying to ease the angle. 
Lothner's got a great kicking record this season. He's concentrated on his kicking and it's paying off. Six points in the very first minute of the match. And that's exactly what Featherston didn't want in their current form. Well, they've just moved it about. It's a kick-off. It's the early start of the game. They just move it out wide, but it's, it's very poor defensive play. A side obviously lacking in, uh, in enthusiasm and uh, straight away St. Helens move it out wide and everybody's caught out of position. I mean, the ball just goes wide on the outside and Lockling skates through a defence that's absolutely spread eagled. Today's official is Stephen Cross from Hessel, near Hull. This will be the second scrum of the game. The first went to St Helens, the second has gone to Featherston, and they need the ball. Alan Banks, Bibb. Well, that's a good run, and uh, there's a chance here for Paul Newlove. The ball got away to him well there uh, by Gary Price. Fox. Again, it's Price. This is better from Featherston. Jeff Gration. Gration thundering towards that line. He hasn't got a try for Featherston at all since he joined them from Leeds, but he wasn't far away that time. And here's Bell. A yard short. Last tackle though. And Fox might try and do it all himself. And he's got up. And is he there? He's over on his back. Well, that's a shame for Featherston Rovers. Uh, they really did need a try at that moment. Look, look at Fox here now. He's drawing the man. He goes himself. He gets knocked down in the tackle here. But he's quick enough to get up and make his way toward the line. Only being thwarted on the line by being turned over. He runs straight. <laughs> Runching tackle there into the body of Tony Kay. It's along that line, but uh, as yet they've not made a lot of ground. Now a little bit more made as he tries to fend off Alan Banks. Well, again, holding is pinning them back. He's not quite made the corner this time. That's going to go dead. But he is the tactician. Yes, and uh, of course it is a tactic that is uh, usually used here down the hill. And uh, that's when, uh, when you get in a position like Featherson can in the second half to use that hill. It is very intimidating for the opposition to play up it. Well, I'm sure Peter Fox will have quite a bit to say about it. And now Fox shows us his kicking prowess up the hill, fielded by David Tanner. Tackling is by Banks and Manning. Kay did well, Tony Kay, really good running and a good ball out for Lachlan as well. Lachlan is tackled, I think. Yes, he's held this time by Bibb. But uh, there's a good break from Kay, and this looks dangerous. Harrison caught around the shoulder, there was nothing wrong with that tackle. And he must be a very awkward man to tackle, in fact. Beavers, this looks good. Cosgrove. Holding thinks about switching play. Oh, and then gives the ball away to Newlove. Well, that was one time that Neil Holding took the wrong option.
Chris Burton. Fisher would have anybody to support him, really. Fox again, the main spring backs, and now Manning comes back in field and gets his ball away for Bibb, and Bibb wriggles out of the tackle. Did well to do that and keeps going. Chris Bibb, elusive running. Now Barry Drummond, who's a spirited runner, and Drummond hairs off through the middle. What an exciting run by a young Barry Drummond that was. Now Fox and Featherston have a lot of men up, but he's chosen to kick. Just watch this now, I mean, he straightens up, and this is what is really wanted now on this Featherston side. You've got to come right down the middle, and this is what he certainly does here. He knows where he's going, and he goes for the line. It's only good cover defence that stop him. St. Helens moving it along that line nicely, and Connolly... Oh, and it's uh, Loughlin who puts it to ground this time. Just that little bit too anxious once again. The initiative goes back to Rovers. It's been that sort of a game. Banks, oh, he rolls into the gap. And there's been only one try in the match, and yet both sides should have had at least two. That's on the back for Roy Haggerty. Tourist, of course, last year. He was a centre originally. He switched to the pack. And this uh, time, a penalty is awarded again by referee Cross to Featherston. And to touch she goes. And this is a real chance then for the home side. Glen Bell will storm up and carry the fight to St Helens. This is when they really need to be turning that screw. And Gratian slips a great ball for Price and Derek Fox surely must get in this time. No, yet again the line holds good. He seemed a certain scorer. He's there this time. And it's the loose forward Andy Fisher who obliges once again. He's had a good record in recent weeks. It's his fifth of the season, and uh, Peter Fox is much happier about that one. So well done to Andy Fisher, it looked as though nobody was going to manage to wriggle over. They've got to do something with it, and they have to move it out. They've now started to run straight. This is a well-planned move, the forward comes on the burst here. Fox backing up as usual, actually hauled back from over the line. But it's from the play of the ball now, where the St Helens defence have been very well organised. Look how they've all moved to one side, and nobody really takes the man. Fisher scoring. Should be a couple of comfortable points for Derek Fox. It's six apiece. We're back all square. seem to approve of that decision but in any case it's a scrum and it'll be a St Helens put in and now a penalty is awarded to the uh, visitors looks as though St Helens are going to bring on Mark Lee in place of uh, John Harrison there he is he's not played in the first team for a couple of years Holding, and St Helens will know they could do with a score before the break. Here is Harrison, they were trying to take him off a moment ago. Still on and making his presence felt. And they'll uh, go left with Bailey. Oh, and uh, Haggerty, a romping run from him. I think he was quite sure whether to try and stretch himself or just get that ball away. Now important for the blue and white line to hold, and Groves gets it away for Neil Holding. Oh, this must be a try. 
it's Harrison John Harrison the man they were going to take off well it's a pretty good decision not to go well, you see the Featherstone defence here now. They know they've got to hang on to this, uh, to get him back into the game. They desperately dive into the tackle, but look how disorganised they are. There's three, four men go for one, leaving him an easy route to the line. And a far simpler kick for Paul Lachlan. So we've had two tries in a minute. One at either end, and uh, Lachlan tacks on the two points to restore the six-point advantage for the Saints. Well, Featherstone would be disappointed. I mean, their defence comes up here, there's two or three men in the tackle. But they really had to hold out here, and they didn't. They allow holding to come back inside, and look how disorganised the defence. There's four or five people around the man with the ball. When Harrison picks it up, no one there at all gives him an easy route. John, just clearing up the mystery about that St Helens substitution, John Harrison has got a knock. He's got a problem with the ball of his right foot. The Saints wanted to bring him off, that's why the decision was going to be made. Of course, having scored a try, they've left him on. They're still worried about him, but they haven't got all that many forwards of quality to bring on, so Alex is a little bit undecided at the moment. This is the last tackle, so I suppose Fox will kick. Yes, he will. And it's the up and under. Young Connolly comes for it, puts it down as well, a knock on by the fullback. It was a tricky kick from Fox. It certainly was, and uh, one can already envisage perhaps that that's the tactic he might use in the second half. Well, St Helens really should have done better with their chance, and as it is, they have to defend against this wily little scrum half. He was called into Great Britain's plans, of course, against New Zealand. Talking of New Zealand, here's one, Bell. Not long before the hooter, but uh, Fox finds Burton there this time. Well, they're trying to go now, would make it interesting, at 12 apiece. Can it be that? Oh, Fox missed one out, but it's gone instead to Chris Bibb, and Bibb goes for the line, and nothing will stop him. Excellent try from the fullback. He stayed down. I hope he's not badly hurt. He took a knock in the act of scoring, and he's certainly got a bleeding mouth. They move at the voucher now, and they, they really know they've got to get back on the scoreboard. Uh, they've thrown so many chances away. Not a good pass by Derek Fox, but the fullback picks it up, wrong foots the defence, and leaves them all. Straightens up and goes for the line with great determination. Good try from a potential international player. He's played, of course, for the under-21 side, and he's added to his tally of tries this season. Only half a dozen against Keithley helped. Well, Featherson desperate for uh, another try to put him on level terms, and it's a bad pass by Fox, goes right behind the defence, but at the same time, it foxes the whole of the defence. Now, Bibb picks it up and turns inside the defence, and with great determination, really goes and hairs for the line. So the concentration intense. This to make it 12 apiece. Looks good to me. Oh dear, it looked good to the crowd as well and it just swirled away at the last moment and it's the last action of the first half. But a good half, David Watkins, in many ways, although the score could have been much higher. Well, yes. Both sides really have, uh, have struggled a little bit. They've put a lot of passes to the floor. But two tries apiece, Alan Hunt and John Harrison for the Saints and Andy Fisher and Chris Bibb for Featherston. The difference then, the two goals from Paul Lachlan against one by Derek Fox for Featherston. Half-time, it's Featherston 10, St Helens 12. We'll be right back with the second half. Welcome back to Post Office Road for the second half here. Certainly a close scoring affair so far. Featherston Rovers 10, St Helens at 12. Let's have a chat with Peter Fox, the Featherston coach. He's down on the touchline with Nick. Peter, two points down at half time. It, it could have been worse for you once, said. Well, it could uh, throw the ball about at random, but the last try that they got was a scramble effort under the post when we should have tackled them out. That was very disappointing because we come back into the game and we looked at most of the attack at this end and we've shown that they're vulnerable as well. I think you've been a little bit concerned about your defence at the play the ball, haven't you? 
Well, we have. To. It's been uh, wide open at times, and, and we uh, we try to tighten that up with a, a second defender at the acting half-back position. We don't like to play because you can't get the ball moving if you do, but that's where you've uh, you've got to tighten them up and stop them running. Peter, thanks very much indeed. We're in the, in the second half with John. And Fellis that are running it towards that St Helens try line straight away, and he's the, oh, he was a yard away. That would have had Peter Fox whooping with delight. Back for Fox, fumbles it, but the ball went backwards. So let's see if they can sustain this pressure coming right up to the St Helens line. And Gary Price might try and work it away. Very close. Interesting, David, to hear that about the tactical switch. Well, that's why they, they, they were vulnerable, and as you rightly said, so at that stage of the game, they just got back into it. And, and of course, they give away a silly try. And that was Gratian Hall down on the sixth tackle, five yards out. Uh, yeah, he was absolutely right what he was saying about the uh, tackling Peter Fox. Disappointing that they should give that one away. Well, they're not organised themselves. Although the second half they've come out with a little bit more verve and a little more spark and they put St. Helens under pressure straight away down the slope. Haggerty runs them out of defence. Good, strong running from Roy Haggerty. Experienced second rower. will kick up the hill and again he shows what a very good tactician he is good tactical kicker well it takes pressure off his defense and uh, he's uh, very good at it he kicks well low trajectory kicks makes a lot of ground of it as well and his forwards will be saying thanks very much Neil that's what we want what a record he's had over the years up down here because St Helens are going to bring on Mark Lee and uh, now John Harrison does come off so uh, preserving John Harrison from that injury St Helens don't get the ball from the scrum though and here's Drummond Harrison's foot injury necessitating the switch the rare chance for Lee lovely ball slipped to Derek Fox and a good one from him to Clark but a forward one according to referee Cross. They certainly have come out firing and of course they know what it's like to play down this hill. That's oh, right, it's always much better backing up the man with the ball and uh, taking the passes quickly. So in the first half, Featherston just edged the scrums, 9-7. There were none one against the head by either hooker. And uh, the penalties, well, Fine St Helens conceded two more than Rovers. And the errors in play even. Peter Fox uh, off his perch for once. Now Fisher again, he's a sprightly mover, is this loose forward, he really is. He's only come into the side this season and he's done so to good purpose. Much better from Feathers than this, they're looking a bit more inventive anyway. And Fox, the little ball inside for Burton. Trying to register his first try for the club. Following his move from Hull KR last year. Fox switches it the other way. Now Chris Bibb once more. He knows where that line is. He's made his over it once. Again they look to Fox and Gratian. Fox again. Now the kick is a good one. And New Lev is in. What an excellent try. And this time, Derek Fox's little kick does catch them napping. And Newell have had a clean pair of hands. Well, Featherstone have to change their tactic. It's out to Fox here now, and instead of moving the ball out wide, he chips it through the middle. And Newell have sensing it through the middle, takes it over the line. And for the first time in the match, Featherstone have the lead. And that's 14 for Paul Newell have now this season. The Great Britain international these days, of course. St Helens will be asking questions of themselves how well, they come to be trailing to a side that's won only one game all season in the league two more points for Derek Fox and the Featherston fans are cheering 16-12 that was a clever try 
Ferguson's ball, it's all happening for them now. And that was Trevor Clark, clung on. necessary for Chris Burton what's happening down on the touchline Nick well Featherstone may be back in front Peter Fox is certainly never satisfied while that conversion was being taken he called Jeff Grayson over to him and said tell Derek Fox and Price and Andy Fisher is doing so well tell them all stop panicking Peter Fox isn't satisfied yet talking of panic there's a ball put down by Rapati which shouldn't have been really but again, it was a fine run from Tony Kay, the centre, at that right touch line. Now then, what can they work here? Connolly, who's had one very good dash in this half, has another one, then loses it, picked up by Mueller. And he'll get it away for Drummond. Now then, Drummond tries to get on the outside of Holding. Fine tackle by the scrum half. This is not an easy man to stop, as we've seen. Newlove wants more. Can he find a gap? Vincent Helen's really squandered their chance then. Gresham is loving every minute of it, and again he comes into the fray. Good old granddad, they say, on the terraces. Fox looking for some space, finds some. Good ball! Fishes second, under the sticks. Thank you very much, he says. And this is the best we've seen from Featherston for a long, long time. And it was Fox again at the hub of it, running them ragged and Fisher's second. What an inspiration, just watch this, he goes as if to drop a goal, you see, the defence caught on the foot, sidesteps Grove with perfection, goes down to it, loose forward on his outside and takes the ball as Fisher and dives over under the post. Well, he certainly uh, knows what to do, they don't look to be panicking to me. And as Fox prepares to kick another goal, which he duly does, Trevor Clark has come for more instructions from Peter Fox down on the touchline. 22-12. Watch how he steps it up now. This is, the, this is the man behind it all. Derek Fox stands in, beats the man, takes it straight forward on him. Fisher on his outside, takes the ball over and goes under the post for a crucial try. It's worth remembering that uh, on no occasion this season has Featherston conceded less than 18 points in a match, so we can expect more to come from the Saints. They've lost the ball of Featherston. Here's St Helen's chance. But this chap Kay again, who's a very good, stringy sort of a runner. He's made some ground whenever he's been in possession. Alex Murphy. He's got to do something now to change the course of events because in this second half it's really been all Featherston. Rose Jones. And if St Helens could get another try at this stage, it would make it uh, very interesting indeed. Groves into the gap is Bailey. Still Bailey. This is the best move that St Helens have had in this half. Groves, yard out. And they'll push him back another three or four yards as well. But still the chances here for the visitors. Holding into the gap and two of them managed to pin him down. Well, it took Bell a long time to haul him. 
That's the last, this is the last tackle. And uh, is there a way through for Vivas? There isn't. A little bit of handover. Well, that was desperate uh, defence by Featherston Rovers, but they've hung on, and uh, this is the only worrying thing about Featherston is sometimes they do let the ball go too often. They really need to get the ball away from there now, and I would imagine one or two play the balls, and they must really kick downfield to get St. Helens out of their half. They were looking to Derek Fox for that. And for the moment, it's Gratian. No, it's not. They've, uh, they've done me wrong. <laughs> he shakes his head, does Jeff Gratian. Now Fox is with, there with the kick. Awkward one for Tanner. Now he picks it up. And that was exactly what Featherston wanted from Fox. Okay, again. <laughs> one way of getting him. And the penalty is awarded because of the dragging him along the ground by his. I was going to say shirt tails, it was shirt cuff. Well, it is an unnecessary tactic that uh, I think once the man is down the floor, you know he has to play the ball and you'd be better off getting back in defence, lining yourself up ready for the opposition. I'm sure St Helens, having gone to Humberside and beaten Hull during the week, wouldn't have expected their recent winning run to come to an end here at Featherston. Not at all, I mean, they've still got a lot to do, and uh, Featherston really have to settle down even themselves, because the lead isn't really enough as far as they're concerned, because Saints always look promising whenever they're on attack, because they do come straight and go forward all the time. They're doing just that now. It's a difficult one for Holding to take, or oh, super sidestep from Holding, and another one! Vivas couldn't hold on, and uh, who's got it? Well, you know, just look at the Holding, this is the really him at his best. He takes the ball on, takes on the defenders, look how he stands people still, puts the ball inside, it wasn't caught by Groves, but the ball went loose on the floor. I think that it shows that uh, there's not that much in the first division this year between top and bottom in many ways. St Helens have been on a great run, Featherston a terrible run, and yet here they are in the lead. That's right, but we did say at the start that uh, both sides have problems with injuries, but nonetheless it is an inspired performance. There's New Love, and that's really giving it the ball away, I'm sure Alex Murphy will not have been at all happy about that. Well, he won't be really, because they've Sloppy. taken things far too easy, and uh, they really now are finding difficulty when you're behind 22 points to 12. It's very difficult now to get back in the game, and at the same time, Featherston are really on top on song, and they're really pushing forward at every opportunity. Yes, St Helens are finding it hard to raise their game. And as a result, Featherston are inside their 25 again, with Fox, and with Price. Fox gives it to Burton, Burton's uh, only eight or nine yards out. This time Fox will get the drop goal, he pops it over. Useful little point to get at this time. You can't put pressure on a side for long periods and not get points, and uh, that's exactly what he has done. Just watch this now, he stands back in a good position, the right foot bangs it over. And the applause is because Alan Dakin is to replace Glenn Bell for the moment. Of course, in rugby league, people can come back on, so it's not to say it's the last we've seen of Glenn Bell today. And I wonder if at long last, Featherston are going to get something out of this season after such a miserable run. again ran well, we've seen uh, much better from him in the second half. Yes he has, he's played well as well, but it's, it's incredible actually the number of players always left, uh, Featherston players left in the wake of St Helens players when they really run at them, and that must be worrying for Peter Fox. Penalty awarded against Alan Hunt for not playing the ball properly, and he throws the ball away in disgust. And now it's all going right for Featherston and wrong for St Helens. 
it's interesting now you see the confidence Derek Fox not taking the kick at goal banging it down to the corner going to use the six play of the balls again and keep St Helens pinned on their line starting with Clark to Dakin they've got four tries can they get a fifth? Burton Dakin spins ooh go the crowd Which way will it come? St Helens tearing out of the traps like greyhounds. Fox finds Fisher going for the hat trick. Oh, what a popular moment that would have been for the young man. On to treasure. Desperate defending from St Helens. <laughs> Somewhere in there was Gary Price. Here is Fox. Not a drop goal this time. Could be a try for someone. Oh! Gration through his legs. I think he'd seen that in a Wigan match, uh, David Iro recently. Read <laughs> a great roar from the crowd, and it was the handover at the end of it all. And now a penalty goes for St Helens. Well, that really was an opportunity lost, I felt then, because Chris Pibb really had uh, his wing outside him and really should have pushed the ball out to the winger then. Instead of that, he tried to sell the dummy and come back inside, it was nailed. Just watch it here now, I mean, he's got the opportunity to put Drummond away, he sells the dummy, and the defence just nails him with nobody there, and he holds his hands and his head in horror. Ten minutes left. St Helens look for a gap anywhere and they haven't really found many in this half the Featherstone tackling has obviously been much better so the new pattern devised by Peter Fox seems to have worked and I think he's on his way into touch one way or another the, the penalty is awarded by referee Cross to St Helens that was a bit like a conger in the dark Nobody knew where they were going. Cosgrove. Again, a penalty is awarded. <laughs> and Groves pushes the referee out of the way to take it. Well, that is some urgency for St Helens. Groves has kept going. Holding, he has two. St Helens got a try, they would still believe they could come back but they've got to get to that try line first and they're not making a very good fist of it, are they? Oh, the ref says play on though What can Holding do? The timing of the pass is crucial picked up now by Bailey 20 yards out Haggerty Gets it away for Bailey, and Bailey chips ahead, and Bailey scores a good try. That is a good try. He really thought about that, and Mark Bailey has put St Helens back in it. Well, it's been a St Helens side now, they're pushing forward all the time, and it, I've always been worried about Feathers and Silk defence. It hasn't been good. Peter Fox has been worried about it as well. He just chipped through here. Bib can't hold him because the ball has gone, and he follows it up to score. And he's a right to be pleased with his try. And if the kick goes over, there will be only five points in it. Ooh, only just in off. But it's 23-18, and we've got a game on our hands again now. Well, Saints have now shown the sort of... Uh uh, going forward, they have to, they've got to have the urgency, it comes back inside, a deft little chip ahead, a defence that has been lacking all afternoon, he picks it up and scores. Fox, kicking through once more, it's an awkward one, well picked up, and a good tackle as well by Fox, he really has been the instigator. St Helens keen to get it away from their own line. Now they do make a bit of ground. Nick. 
Well, John, just picking up that point that you were making and David making about Derek Fox, and if it had been 13 off them, Featherston might have won by even more. Peter Fox is actually not convinced about that because he was upset when Derek Fox dropped the goal. And the score, of course, now only five points different. Peter Fox's view was that they should have gone for the try to make themselves more safe. And it'd be interesting to see what happened now. Still only five points in it. Well, that's a demanding coach, obviously, but St Helens do have the ball, and they are coming up this hill with Lachlan getting it away onto this wing to Alan Hunt. He scored one in the first minute, and he's got it away for Lachlan, inside is Beavers, Beavers chased by Drummond, Connolly, under the posts, what a score! A length of the field try, and the youngster, who made some mistakes in the first half, has certainly got his own back. And Gary Connolly takes St Helens to within a point, and surely Lachlan should give St Helens the lead again with the kick. He's a happy lad. Well, they've really put everything into it, St. Helens, in, the, in this last few minutes. Their urgency has come back to the play. They've moved the ball out. They've had good backing up, a poor defence, all at sixes and sevens. Beaver's taking his time, going to be caught, but floats it back inside. Connolly, again backing up. This is what the game is all about. And he goes over and opposed under the force. The St. Helens fans behind those posts jump for joy. I'm sure Alex Murphy will be shouting to them now, just hold on. Not any wild passes at a time like this. And Beavers does exactly that. Now he gets it out to holding. The two half-backs have really given a uh, marvellous exhibition. Haggerty. That's it. It's a Saints win. And despair for Rovers. Alex Murphy leads the applause, as well he might because his team almost looked dead with about uh, 10 minutes to go. But they uh, came back and showed some real resilience there. Disappointment for Peter Fox, and he must wonder what he's got to do to produce a victory for his team at the moment. And so, despite two tries for Fisher, one from Bibb and one from Newlove, plus three goals from Fox and a drop goal, it's St Helens who take the two points. Hunt, Harrison, Bailey, Connolly, their try scorers. And Paul Lachlan's four goals were important. Who's the Stones bit of man of the match, David? Well, despite St Helens' fine comeback and their win, and their side did play very well, I have to give it to Derek Fox, because he was an inspiration to his team. He was a superb passer of the ball, always prompting and scheming, as that move that put Andy Fisher over under the post only goes to illustrate. Well, it was really a case today of you giving it them rather than them winning it from you. That's right, yes. Uh, the game's played over 80 minutes, and unfortunately, uh, we got so far in front that thought the game was won. And good luck, all the best for St. Helens. They, uh, they came back and stole the show in the last couple of minutes, so uh, all credit to them. Well, you know you've got a lot of work yet to put in, uh, but it's going to be a hard slog now, isn't it? It is, yes. Uh, Peter said we need to win four out of the next six games. Unfortunately, next week is uh, his cup game, so uh, I think his next away game is Sheffield, which uh, Sheffield are riding out at the moment. So we've got to uh, come round a bit. And uh, I thought we turned the corner today, actually, but unfortunately, uh, Saints put us back in his place again. So uh, well, disappointment today, but let's hope it goes well for you in the future. Thanks very much, David. Thank you. I'd just like to thank Stones Bitter and uh, Yorkshire Television for this award. Thank you very much. This is the way of the day statistics. We had a scrum every four minutes. Rovers took 13 of them, St Helens 10, but neither Trevor Clark nor Paul Groves was successful in healing against the head. It was a very sporting contest reflected by the penalty count. Rovers conceded just nine penalties, St Helens won fewer than that. But the errors in play went to the other extreme. Featherston put down 20 passes and Alex Murphy's men spilled the ball 22 times. Now Nick has the rest of the news and the results. And the main story comes from Odsall, where Phil Ford's two tries against his old club, one in the last minute, weren't enough to save Leeds. Elsewhere, Mark Aston's four goals helped bring Sheffield back from 20 points down, 50th consecutive match he scored in. Andy Mason, two tries in Wakefield's dramatic comeback against Barrow. Wigan's Mark Preston gets his 19th touchdown of the season as Hull are overwhelmed. And in Division 2, Armstrong and Bishop collect two tries each as Hulkingston Rovers score 50, but Dick Fairbank is sent off as Halifax lose at Carlisle. The Stones better championship, the results, Bradford Northern 14, Leeds 30. Featherston 23, St Helens 24, Salford 20, Sheffield 20, Wakefield 30, Barrow 16, Warrington 16, Lee 8, Wigan 30, Hull 2.
In the match of the day at Oddsall, Bradford drew first blood against Leeds, David Hobbs kicking Northern in front after 20 minutes. And two minutes later, they went further in front, a driving run from Carl Fairbank, who later won Bradford's Man of the Match award. Acting halfback is the man who stood in so successfully for Brian Noble as Bradford's hooker, Glenn Barraclough, and he sets up Neil Roebuck. This match had kicked off 15 minutes late because so many fans wanted to get in. They'd all arrived in time to see Hobbs add on the conversion and Bradford eight points in front. Leeds' first points followed that crunching tackle by Fairbank on Gary Devorty. The referee, Robin Whitfield, deciding it didn't wor warrant any more than a penalty kick, which Maskell plonks over for Leeds' first points of the match. And just before half-time, they got their first try of the match. Devorty feeding Coleman. It's on the last tackle, so the intelligent kick through. And Phil Ford with the try against his old club. Maskell added the conversion. Eight points all the score at half-time. Into the second half, and Leeds scored first. Schofield's drop goal leads 9-8 in front. Northern replied in kind. David Hobbs, his drop goal. Another one a few moments later from a real drop goal specialist, Paul Harkin. Watch the dummy. Bradford back in front, 10 points to nine. Then the try that Northern thought had probably sealed the match, worked out wide by McGowan. The fullback, Errol Johnson, sending Gerald Cordell over in the corner. This with 15 minutes left, and the crowd, the Bradford Northern fans, among the 14,000, certainly enjoying it. Didn't enjoy the conversion quite so much. David Hobbs just wide with that. So Northern, having dominated throughout, had to withstand some severe Leeds pressure in the last five or ten minutes. This the most dramatic moment of all. Coleman, Devorty, the ball finally worked out to the substitute Warren Wilson on the far side. Back it comes. Again, you'll see Coleman involved. Here he is as the playmaker. The ball switch, David Heron playing back in the pack again this week. And finally, it's worked out by Fawcett to Phil Ford in the corner for his second try of the match. Leads within one point. It's all on Colin Maskell's kick. And he fluffs it. The hooter goes almost immediately. And the Bradford fans are the ones who can celebrate tonight. Their club level on points with Leeds. It's Bradford 14, Leeds 13. So there's the championship table. Bradford, you see, now trailing Leeds only on points difference. And Wakefield are also on 14 points. It's been a good day for Wigan, though. And they'd have been four points clear tonight, but for St Helens' late recovery at Featherston. Division 2. Batley 10, Fulham 12. Bramley 2, Huddersfield 14. Carlisle 30, Halifax 20. Hulkingston Rovers 54, Dewsbury 6. Hunslet 20, Rochdale 26. Nottingham 13, Runcorn 6. Oldham 30, Doncaster 8. Trafford Borough 24, Workington 10. Whitehaven 22, Keithley 18. Second division leaders Rochdale Hornets were at Ellen Road, but it was Hunslet who actually scored first in the try a gift. Colin Panola kicking ahead and racing away to touch down. His first of the season and an easy conversion for Wilkinson. But Rochdale are the league's top point scorers and they were soon hitting back with a really excellent score. It was a long range move involving winger Higgins, an excellent break by him and good support as well from his centre. There may have been a forward pass there but the referee saw nothing wrong and the scorer sent to Mark Lord. Hunslet haven't been having the happiest of seasons, but they stung the Hornets with the quality of their attacking play, rounded off here by fullback Paul Burrows. It was a game that toed and froed, and just when Rochdale needed some inspiration, they got it from John Woods collecting the kick through and skipping through with the enthusiasm of a colt. A difficult kick for Steve Turner, but he was equal to the task. Hunslet kept plugging away and got their reward with Panola's second try in the corner. No goal that time, but now look out for one of the tries of the season. It belongs to Rochdale's John Higgins. No need for comment, just watch him go. A 90-yarder from Higgins, but some of that Hunslet tackling wasn't too good. The kick was, though. Now here come Rochdale again. But they're on the receiving end this time. Yet another interception by that handyman, Panola. 
and that's his hat trick. And two more points for Wilkinson. Hunslet still well in the game. But Rochdale confirmed their status as leaders with another excellent try. Hooker Hall opening the way for Lord second in the corner. And a great touchline goal by Turner. Just one more score to come, and it's the substitute forward, Tony Humphreys, who forces his way over for the final touchdown. Hunslet 20, Rochdale Hornets 26. So Rochdale stay top, holding off Oldham on points difference. Hulkingston Rovers are third, Huddersfield up one to fourth, and Rydale York up four to fifth by virtue of winning on Friday night. So to part two of our competition, and the questions about today's two coaches. How many club sides have they coached between them? How many league clubs have Peter Fox and Alex Murphy coached between them? Keep a note of your answer for the final part of the competition and how to enter next week. Our action next week comes from down under. Now quick hands along the blind side. Here's Courier. Courier decides to kick ahead. Grant coming through quickly. The bounce doesn't favour Melcher. And Grant, can he get his pass away? Yes, he can. Courier. That Courier, can he get his pass away? Sterling. Sterling charging for the line. Big ball. Sterling scores. Right at half time. The Tigers have scored a try for nothing. The Australian Grand Final next week on Scrum Down. For now, we say goodnight from Post Office Road, where Featherston lined up their first league win in 84 days and then had it snatched from them. Good night. Scrum Down next Sunday is at the later time of 12.10.